Uh, it's funny. I've, I've been spending the day trying to reorganize my time constraints so that I can do more, well, so that I get more accomplished in one set of time so that I could do, like, basically God told me to do was to rest on one day a week. And, man, when you try to change things around, it sure gets tough. <laughs> But isn't that typical? I don't know if your day is like my day, but sometimes the challenges are amusing to me because it's not that they're impossible to do, it's just that they're challenging to do. In Tozer, spirit time, the result is spiritual illumination. Having the understanding darkened because of the blindness of their heart, Ephesians 4.18. It may shock some readers to suggest that there is a difference between being Bible taught and spirit taught. Nevertheless, it is so. It is altogether possible to be instructed in the rudiments of the faith and still have no real understanding of the entire book. And it is possible to go on to become expert in Bible doctrine and not have spiritual illumination, with the result that a veil remains over the mind preventing it from apprehending the truth in its spiritual essence. Most of us are acquainted with churches that teach the Bible to their children, reinforce it with catechism classes, and still never produce in them a living Christianity or a viral godliness. Their members show no evidence of having passed from death into life. None of the earmarks of salvation so plainly indicated in the scriptures are found among them. Their religious lives are correct and reasonably moral but wholly mechanical and altogether lacking in radiance. Many of them are pathetically serious about it all, but they are spiritually blind, getting along with the outward shell of faith while all the time their deep hearts are starving for spiritual reality. It has been said that the scriptures, to be understood, must be read with the same spirit that originally inspired them. No one denies this, but even such a statement will go over the heads of those who hear it unless the Holy Spirit inflames the heart. You know, in Tozer's time, he was talking about those that could be so religious and know the scriptures that they get and miss out on the point of the scripture. In our day, these latter days, sometimes people can be so spiritually spiritisms that they've made spiritual everything and miss the point that there is scripture that they cannot contradict. So it feels like the pendulum has swung where there's more of an experiential of the spiritual giftings or gifting this or playing this or doing that, rather than knowing that you cannot have a contradiction in scripture. God does not contradict himself. You don't have the Holy Spirit contradicting his own inspiration that he gave according to the Bible, the Word of God, in the fullness of it. And it's humorous in a way because the intentions are good, the wording sounds right, but when you watch and you see and you begin to go, but something just doesn't fit. Somehow there's a tendency to lean towards the experience of, oh, I'm, I'm a prophetess or I'm a prophet or oh, I've got this calling and this is more important to me, you know, and I have this word that God could do anything, so God's going to do this. And yet they contradict the scripture in playing as though they were the author of the scripture. And then the same thing is true of those that are dead in the faith sometimes, where they go, they know the doctrines, they know the dogmas, but they don't have a relationship. You know, the fascinating thing to me is this. Somewhere in between the two, we find... John the Baptist and we find religious zealots that were politically motivated and we find who? Peter and James who wanted to be on the right hand and on the left and they wanted to forbid John's disciples from baptizing. And then we have those who wanted to likewise use Jesus for their own use and manipulation. But also in the mix of all that is Jesus. Now the interesting thing is that Jesus spoke to all of them and they all reacted differently. Each one of them understood 
up to a point what he was saying but did they do what he said to do and that's the fascinating angle with which we have to approach the subject when you read the word of god do you treat it as the word of god and do you do what jesus tells you to do according to the word of god because jesus is the living word of god he is the scripture from cover to cover the embodiment thereof if you have seen jesus you have seen the word of god if you have seen jesus you have seen the father if you have seen jesus you have seen god literally so all that we need and all that we should understand must be foundational in and of Jesus himself so that we can look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. We can look at the very words Jesus spoke and there should be no confusion. There should be no absolutism to the left or absolutism to the right. There should be completely God in the midst of us, speaking to us and directing us by his love, by his mercy, by his guidance, by his very words spoken to us that cause us to come to him and seek him. When you have a complete picture and all the pieces fit, then you know beyond any shadow of a doubt that nothing can be added to or taken from that picture because it won't fit. When you do that in your theology or in your relationship with God, in your personal dynamic with Jesus, then you will know why and how the body fits perfectly together. Though there may be those that don't understand you, and you may be ministering on the one hand to the left and on the other hand to the right, you will at least know what it is to be like Jesus when he had 12 disciples that were all competing for his attention and completely misunderstanding what he had to say. Likewise, you seek the Lord to understand him the best way you know how each and every day, and that's all you need to walk there in. You don't need to be something you're not. You just need to be who Jesus is in you, and he will lead you in the way that you should go. Because Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is still Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. You can trust in the Lord with all your heart. And he will direct your path because you're not leaning into your own understanding. Just acknowledge him in all your ways. Sounds good to me. How about you?